Griffin Update is our student-produced digital magazine show bringing you news, sports, and information from Missouri Western State University and the surrounding region. During each program, we will present an in-depth look at the people, places, and events that make Missouri Western and the Northwest region of Missouri a great place to call home. Hello, and welcome to Griffin Update. I'm Mackenzie Bose. And I'm Morgan Doyle. We're in full swing and giving you coverage of everything we can, including a couple events that happened off campus. And with fall starting, we want to make sure your health is in top standings with information from our health fair. And you will also hear Bailey Ketchum's sports report a little bit later. Now, not to make assumptions or anything, but you don't sound too good. Yeah, I started to kind of get a cold. Thought it was going to be allergies, but before the temperatures really hit, I caught something. Well, you better not get me sick. I sure <laughs> hope you're taking medicine. I did, and I'm a little bit better, but I'm not completely over it. Well, you could have gone to the health fair and gotten your flu shot. Reporter Lance Lawton covered the health fair and can tell you more. Keep your body, spirit, and mind at their peak. This is the motto to help promote the student health fair, happening Wednesday, September 26th in the Fulkerson Center. From 11 a.m. to 3, students are able to learn how they can stay active and be healthy while receiving free flu shots, t-shirts, and balloon entertainment. Fitness Center coordinator Emily Garcia talks more on what the event is all about. So the event's really about bringing the health and wellness areas of St. Joe to Missouri Western. You know, we have a lot offered on campus, the Esri Student Health Center, Recreation Services, um, you know, a bunch of different things, but there's so many different options within the St. Joe community that we wanted to show people that they have access to. And a lot of times they do provide even discounted services or free services to students, but it just goes unrecognized. And so by bringing them here, students get exposed to that. This health fair may sound rather easy to put on, but Garcia says they will start planning next year's health fair as soon as this one concludes. Uh, definitely a month after. We meet every month following. And then the month of, we probably meet once a week, if not more. So it, I think I get 30 emails a day within the month of the health fair. So it, it gets a little chaotic, but it, there's just so many little entities that go into it. Not only are the representatives of each organization having fun during this event, there is a line starting to build of students wanting to attend and get in on the action. Christian Sarna, a sophomore at Western, looks forward to coming to the yearly health fair. Uh, I would say definitely come out. It's a worthwhile event to come to. There's all kinds of free stuff like water bottles, um, condoms. It, yeah, it's pretty cool. There's lots of different people from different departments. Even though one of the main aspects of the fair is to promote health and wellness, Garcia believes it's a great opportunity for networking and making connections within the community. A lot of students can actually come and get connections to do volunteer work down the road. There's a lot of nonprofits that come, which is an area where until you meet them, you don't get exposed to that if that's an area that you're looking to go into. Reporting for Griffin Media, this is Lance Lawton. Man, I really wish I could have pet those therapy dogs. They were pretty cute. As an athlete, it's super important to keep up with your health. I already got my flu shot, but if I would have known it was free, I would have gotten it here. Maybe I should have got that flu shot. It might have helped me a little bit. But aside from me being all stuffy and kind of gross right now, fall is my absolute favorite. You are telling me. Hot chocolate, Hallmark movies, pumpkin spice everything, flannels. I am definitely a flannel wearing, pumpkin pie eating type of girl. I'm more of an apple cider and apple crisp kind of girl over pumpkin. Why? Well, you know what, maybe if you're feeling adventurous, you can check out Hunt's Apple Orchard. Kelsey Hall took a trip to Amazonia, Missouri and brought us along to check out this cute little pumpkin patch. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow! Zip lines, hay rides, and pumpkins are back at Hunt's Apple Orchard for their annual fall festival. I think the, the staff, the, the people that work here are, are just all very family oriented and they just want everyone to come out and have a good time and just have fun. And they try to make everything as unique for the children to have uh, fun and participating as well as the adults. Hunt's Orchard offers a wide variety of activities for people of all ages to enjoy. From petting zoos to roasting your own hot dogs over a campfire, this is the ultimate place to enjoy this fall season. I haven't 
really done any of the activities per se, but if I was able to, I would say probably the slide. <laughs> the slide is the newest addition to the orchard this year. <laughs> The orchard is open daily from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and 1 to 5.30 on Sundays. If you want to experience the Midwestern celebration of fall, stop by Hunt's Orchard, located off K Highway in Amazonia, Missouri. This is Kelsey Hall reporting for Griffin Media. Wow, I just love fall. It's definitely my favorite season. I agree 100%. Do you ever travel to Kansas City? I have a couple of times, and I actually really like the town. One of the things I really like about it is the farmer's market. Oh, that place is so much fun. However, that's not quite what I'm talking about. One of the events they had was to raise awareness for suicide and prevention. Reporter Sheena Kelly traveled her way down there to tell us more. It's a topic that may hit home for many of us, suicide. A harsh reality that is the second leading cause of death among college students. Counseling Center Director at Missouri Western, Dave Brown, says suicide prevention isn't just one month. For him, it's all year round. Suicide prevention, you know, has its months and its weeks and its special times, but for us it's an ongoing thing because we deal with this population where that is such an issue. Um, we try to keep a lot of resources available for people at all times. We have pamphlets available. We have presentations that we give on the topic. And so it's an ongoing issue for us because of the per pervasiveness of, of, of the symptoms that go along with, uh, with suicide, obviously the, the act itself. There were vendors that came out to offer information, resources, and even therapeutical tips on how to overcome factors towards suicide. It may not be too easy to talk about, but it can't be ignored. Talk to someone. If you find that, there, that the things that you're thinking or the things that you're feeling just aren't right, talk to someone. Reach out to someone. Do not let a fear about stigma and uh, being labeled on all those things cost you your life. Reporting for Griffin Media, this is Sheena Kelly. I love how people are so passionate about different ideas and causes. Yeah, stuff like that's really important to me. Another thing that's super important is one of the events that happened on campus. It was a Muslim American poet and activist speaker. Amal Kassir traveled to campus to tell people her story. Reporter Elijah Smith has more. Only a farmer will convince this soil to grow again. Missouri Western hosted Muslim American poet and activist Amal Kassir on Wednesday, September 26th. Kassir performed poetry, told some of her story, and took questions from those in attendance. The more people that know, the more the, more the truth of what's happening will be preserved. Kassir comes from a unique background. Her father is from Syria, her mother from Iowa, and she was born and raised in Denver. But her passion for justice for all was on full display as she spoke. We tend to forget that there are people behind those walls. I don't really get nervous anymore because I, I know what I'm trying to say, you know. And I mean, I get embarrassed. What's the worst that's going to happen? You know, people laugh at me. Students who were there said they enjoyed Kassir's message of unity and strength. Her message totally got across um, all religions, no matter what religion you are, I think. Just the message of love and peace should be able to apply to anybody. Being able to tell stories of her family that lived back in Syria, her family that passed away, family that she didn't even know that passed away, but still being able to tell it in such a positive manner. Kassir says her stories and her humor have impacted many of those who have listened to her. I know no one expects me to crack a joke the second I walk up on stage. And I think that my work disarms people before they have the chance to pull out their, their weapon. Well, I heard this. Well, I heard that. Well, what about this? I'm going to make a joke about what you heard before you tell me what you heard. And then we're going to have to start on ground zero. Reporting for Griffin Media, this is Elijah Smith. She is such a strong and independent woman. I think she really impacts people and opens their eyes to what she's speaking about. Well, that's all we have for you right now, but hang tight. And stay tuned for the Griffin Newscast and Bailey Sports Report after this message. A leading problem I faced is a misunderstanding on the part of students of the importance of academic advising. They miss appointments. They don't make appointments. 
But what's most disappointing is when they come unprepared. Give me a student with a plan in their head, or better yet, on paper. We could talk about their interests, not just about their classes. We could discuss internships, classwork, grad programs. It would open the door to what advising is truly about. Can I help you? But instead, they come to me in a panic when they need to what register I because- I need to talk to you. I was trying to register for my classes, but it wouldn't let me do it because I need my pin, and I haven't had time to set up an advising, so I don't even know what classes I need to take. So I just signed up for a bunch of random ones, and I'm going to drop them later. So can I have my pin real fast? Because I'm still locked into a computer in the lab. Am I interrupting? Take ownership of your education. Make the most of your advisement by being proactive, punctual, and prepared. You'll open the door to more personalized attention and avoid costly setbacks. It's never too soon to begin planning your next steps at Missouri Western. Ahead on the Griffin Newscast, the father of Michael Brown Jr. comes to Missouri Western what he wants the world to know about his son. That and more is coming up. The Griffin Newscast starts now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brittany Price. On August 9th, 2014, Michael Brown Jr. was fatally shot by a police officer, sparking protests that made headlines across the nation. Now his father is traveling around the country telling the world more about his son's story. Reporter Tanner Cobb was there for Brown's recent visit to Western and has more. Michael Brown Sr. came to Missouri Western to speak about the truth of his son's death on September 27th at 7 p.m. Michael Brown Jr. was shot and killed by a white police officer in Ferguson, Missouri in August of 2014. Basically just the truth to cover up uh, the loss of Mike Brown Jr. Um, a lot of people around the world does not know the truth. They only know what the, the media showed them. Michael Brown Sr. has a different outlook than most people in this situation, and he influenced many students in attendance. I'm not a speaker. I'm a grieving father, so it's a difference. Um, people are hurt felt by the words that come out of my mouth instead of me saying that I'm an actual speaker because I don't, that's not my profession. You know, I just come out, I tell the truth, and I love on the people that invite me in. So being from St. Louis, uh, knowing the situation, it was uh, very strong to hear from someone who had to experience it firsthand, those hardships, so it was very, very powerful stuff. Just to be humble, uh, something that he said that uh, no matter where you have, everything could be stripped in an instant. Uh, and so it brings humbleness to my position as well, because I realized that I won't be here forever. Such an injustice is so hard for anyone uh, just to wrap their head around, and having it hit so close to home, uh, it, it, I, I, I feel his pain. This is Tanner Kyle reporting for Griffin Media. A pair of Missouri Western faculty represented the university at two separate conferences over the summer. Biology professor Dr. Tilla Tomaroy presented at the National Botany Conference in July, while mathematics professor Dr. Jeff Poet represented Missouri at the annual summer meeting of the Mathematical Association of America. Both professors spoke on the opportunity to represent Missouri Western. The more you are sort of, you know, you have all these resources, it just broadens your mind so you can go out there and do something good. The state of Missouri is very well represented in the national organization. It's my privilege to represent my colleagues here at Missouri Western and also my colleagues across the state. Students of both professors say they are lucky to work with them. Earlier this week, Western students got an up-close look at how the judicial system works. Rachel Bertram has more on the Missouri Court of Appeals meeting on campus. The Missouri Western Court of Appeals Western District came to campus to help students better understand the legal process by running three cases on October 2nd, 2018 in Sprat 101. Students like Brittany Hubbard enjoyed coming out to participate in the appeals court. Coming from a legal studies perspective, it's beneficial because we get to see the courts in action. It's a great opportunity to see how the court system works and kind of humanize judges. There were three ruling judges on the panel. Chief Judge Karen King Mitchell, Appeals Judge Victor C. Howard, and Circuit Judge George E. Wolf. Professor of Criminal Justice David Tusshouse believes that the appeals court is a worthwhile experience. To me, it's, it's important that the people understand how the courts work, even though these, none of these cases this morning is, is necessarily a civil rights case, you can recognize 
realize that if I have a wrong between me and another person, I can take that to the courts. This is Rachel Bertram reporting for Griffin Media. SGA is now requiring that registered student organizations complete five hours of community service over the course of a year in order to receive funding. This is the first community service requirement that SGA has implemented for RSOs. SGA President Austin Hall says that the goal of the amendment is to better connect Missouri Western to the St. Joseph community. RSOs that received funding prior to the amendment passing will not be required to complete the hours for this year, but they will need to do them for the next academic year in order to receive next year's funding. That's what's making news on the campus of Missouri Western. To see updates on these stories and others, pick up a copy of the Griffin News or find us online at thegriffinnews.com. I'm Brittany Price, and that's your news in five minutes. Thanks for watching the Griffin Newscast. One out of every four car accidents are caused by texting and driving. Wait, what did you just say? You heard me. That's better keep your eyes on the road. Welcome to the Griffin Update Sports Report, your place to catch up on all Griffin sports. I'm your host, Bailey Ketchum. We had a weekend full of fall sports. First up, soccer went 2-0 this weekend against Emporia State and Washburn. Reporter Miles Kilgore was there to catch the action. On Friday, Western Soccer hosted Emporia State in an MIAA battle. It was a hard-fought back-and-forth game with both teams lighting up the scoreboard. The Hornets struck first as Maria Walden knocked in a header in the 24th minute. Western answered right back in the 34th minute when Cassidy Minky tied the game at 1. The Griffins took a 2-1 lead in the second half on a beautiful shot by Lily Davis in the 59th minute. However, Emporia State would strike back twice, giving them a 3-2 lead thanks to a couple of nice goals midway through the second half. As time was winding down in the 89th minute, Claire Myers tied the game at three. After she tied the game, she drew a huge penalty in the box, leading to a free kick by Cassidy Minky, in which she knocked in to seal the 4-3 victory for Western. Anytime you can score four goals, you know, that's not easy, right? Uh, that's that's a that's a definitely a bonus and uh, something that's a positive from tonight. And then obviously the negative is giving up three goals. Our forwards just were kind of clicking today. Um, we had a lot of runners in the box. Um, our attacking mids and our defensive mids were um, getting into the attack a lot, which is really, really good to see. Western is now 7-3 and three on the year and 2-1 and one in conference play. For Miles Kilgore, reporting for Griffin Media, I'm Dawson Whitman. They're away this weekend against Fort Hayes and Kearney. In other sports news, football had an exciting win against Washburn on Saturday. Their offense had a high total of 544 yards with five touchdowns. Defense also had an exciting night with four picks off of Washburn's quarterback. Don Marino went 17 for 23 on passing for 249 yards with a touchdown himself. The Griffins scored on all four trips to the red zone. This is the first time Western has beat Washburn since 2014. The final score was 38-7 and put the Griffins in a three-way tie for third in the MIAA standings. They are away Saturday against Missouri Southern. Volleyball was also home this weekend. They had a tough loss to Kearney on Friday, but bounced back with a win against Fort Hayes on Saturday. The win ended their three-game losing streak, but they won in three straight sets. The only set the Griffins ever trailed in was the first, but once they went on a 15-6 run, they never trailed again. Stephanie Doak led the team with 12 kills, Rachel Loesch had a high of 7 blocks, and Liv Winker led with 34 assists. They are home again this weekend against Pitt State and UCO. For more updates on the weekend, men's and women's cross country competed in the Rim Rock Farm Classic in Lawrence last weekend. Women finished 8th and men finished 10th against 16 other teams. And women's golf finished 6th in the Augustana Fall Invitational with an overall score of 650. That's all we have for you today in sports. 
For more information on Griffin Athletics, check out GoGriffins.com. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. You can watch our show on MWSU TV Channel 12. You can also catch us on the Griffin Update Vimeo and YouTube channels and the Missouri Western Student Media homepage. And make sure you check out the next edition of the Griffin News. For all of us here at Griffin Update, thank you for watching.